I remember when you played me like three seconds of the song <laughs> once on her phone and I burst into tears. She was like, like, oh, oh my tears. God, <laughs> this is so good. Uh, it's very maternal in a way, but like a cat can be maternal, you know. With, <laughs> you know. Yeah. When we walked in and they showed it to us, we were like, oh my gosh, season two, they're not kidding. They're <laughs> not going for it. I am Ruth Kinane with Entertainment Weekly, and welcome to Entertainment Weekly's Around the Table with the cast and creator of Emily in Paris. Thank you guys so much for being here. For Thank, you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. I'm so excited to find out everything about season two. Are you okay? When I went to go say goodbye to Gabrielle, it turned into the most incredible night of sex that I've ever had in my entire life. Get it, girl? No! no. Um, I wonder the best place to start is to go back to the season one finale. And um, Lily, how is Emily doing after her night of passion with Gabrielle, thinking he's leaving <laughs> town, and then, oops, no, he's not. Where do we kind of pick up? Is there a time lapse, or are we right back in the thick of it? We are right back into the sticky situation. Um, Emily is left very conflicted, and we, we, we come back right into the thick of things. But what I love about this season is that as Emily immerses herself more in the French culture and in her surroundings, she becomes more confident confident within her, her place in the city and it allows her to explore new characters that come into play and also her female friendships at work and, and um, in her personal life. And, and we have new characters that she gets to meet. So the, the, uh, the drama continues and uh, <laughs> um, the romance with, within herself, with her friends and new possible romances. It just, it's always a fun time with Emily. So embracing the chaos. More yes. Yeah. You know what? I think Emily learned that the more you fight it, the worse it is. So embracing the chaos and leaning on her friends, especially this one who she moves in with, um, to to kind of work through it is the best way. No for Sorry, life, that... break the chaos. No for life, break the chaos. Triangles. All over. <laughs> you know what? Honestly, this season, this season, we're embracing all geometry. This is what I'm saying. <laughs> right, exactly. Right. I just I'll said that in, an interview. <laughs> in the writer's room is part of the fun, kind of throwing as many challenges as you can. You, uh, Emily and just seeing her kind of try and deal with them all. Yeah, we we never want to make Emily's life simple. And <laughs> it definitely it definitely isn't this season. We throw a lot at her, and by the end of by the end of season two, I think her, you know, she's dizzy in terms of you know <laughs> the, just the, live it, just trying to navigate the mess that she's created i wouldn't that say you've created the for us the, com <laughs> the complications the complications and i think her life this season is just a, a function of how much she's immersed herself in sort of the fabric of paris it's just she's sort of living her life she's not trying to figure things out as much as just actually just living this season you think that's maybe the theme of season two is kind of just Living it. That's a good way to put it. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Emily's living you can it. Have it. Two. You can use it. <laughs> On top of the world now. Gabrielle has decided to stay in Paris, but there's something else behind this. I just don't know yet what it is. I need to explain myself. The more you say, the worse it sounds. Which is why I have to talk to her. Ooh, that sounded desperate. Well, one of the good things we saw in the season one finale was that Gabrielle got his own restaurant in Paris. Um, Luca, I assume it's just really stress-free and like really easy for him and nothing goes wrong there. <laughs> I know, no, it's, it's really exciting. And um, it's it's an opportunity for Gabrielle to expand and to, you know, uh, go further in, into his passion and have more, you know, uh, more of a saying into what's going on in his uh, professional life. Uh, Camille, for you, your character, she thought her boyfriend was leaving town or maybe her ex-boyfriend and now he's still in town. How is she kind of navigating that also with her friendship with Emily? Oh, she's going to be surprised for sure uh, to learn from another person that he's staying. She's trying to navigate with Emily. She's trying to stay loyal to her, but she wants her man back too. So it's obviously a really complicated situation that she will try to figure it out, right? Everyone's embracing the chaos. Okay, love it. <laughs> so we also new characters, um, like you mentioned, Lily. Um, Lucy, and what can you tell us about Alfie and why, why is he in Paris? What's he doing there? Uh, Alfie gets dropped in Paris. Not not because he wants to be there. He's there for work, and then he has this whole per perception of Paris. Is he, he he doesn't buy into it. He doesn't buy into it whatsoever. And then he meets the lovely Emily Cooper, and she opens his eyes. This whole world. 
of, of, of love, romance, and in and, and, and the beauty uh, of life, really. And I think they go on a journey together, which is which is pretty special because I think in in, in Emily's life as well, I think they both need each other. And I think um, Alfie's kind of a backdoor for her to sneak out of her structured life and just to go a little bit crazy and live for herself for the first time, which is, which, which is, which is beautiful to see. And yeah, I'm, listen, I'm just happy to be here with these guys. That, that's it. For me. Oh, we're happy to have you. We're yeah. so happy. Yeah, man. Like, yeah, yeah this, is, this, is, this is incredible for me. Uh, honestly, I, I feel truly blessed to be here. Is it daunting coming onto a show that like had such a huge first season? Like, that, I don't know, would that be scary? <laughs> I, I've, I've been the new kid at school before. Right. And that, that, that had nothing on this. And let me tell you, to, to 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 walk into that 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 first read through um and 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 I, I'm gonna say this let it it comes from yourself like you threw your arms around me and Ashley you was you you guys were both there and just w- welcome into this family and this 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 world and that all went out the window and honestly to 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 work with these guys and and, and to be able to play and to be able to create is being so so wonderful and and I, honestly I, I, I couldn't have asked for anything else because you can go into shows where they qu- can be quite hostile and this is um this is this is just really really special and um and i hope it comes across the screen as well yeah yeah nice added bonus of being in paris france for your <laughs> my first time in paris my first time in no, paris right. yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, it's, it's so you're just like you're basically just like the character literally it, it, it should be alfie in paris like, well lucy yeah. in paris that, that's <laughs> yeah, yeah literally that's how i felt and um no, on, on, honestly, it's, it's, it's been it's been every, everything and more. And I've had one of the best years of my life. Um, and I've got to tip my hat to, to you guys for that. So really, thank you. Yeah. Lily, do you feel like Emily leans into French culture or Parisian culture a little bit more because Alfie's kind of resistant of it? This season specifically, that was really exciting to be able to have Emily embrace the French culture. Just, you know, France is embracing her more this season. You know, we're getting to see her in French class more. There's more subtitles this season season with all the French characters, which was so exciting. She's going and exploring different areas of the city with um, her French colleagues, her friends, and also taking note of French je ne sais quoi style, drawing in inspiration from French cinematic icons. Um, but that was that was really fun for us to get to explore for Emily. And also, I think because Alfie is 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 more on the negative spectrum of Paris, it allows for Emily's optimism to kind of shine even more. And she almost becomes like a Parisian tour guide of sorts. <laughs> and, you know, he really challenges her in ways that at the beginning are incredibly annoying to both of them, but equally intriguing and um, and endearing. And I think that we get to see Emily kind of vocalize a lot of the things that she wanted in season one to believe herself and this season truly Mm -hmm. believes about the city because she's experiencing it more in a different way. And it was a really great way to kind of incorporate the audience's view on Paris as both characters and kind of vocalize the things that we're all thinking. And I thought it was just kind of a brilliant way of creating that storyline. used to be so decisive. And ever since I moved to Paris, my life has just been chaotic and dramatic and complicated. Oh, Emily, you're getting more French by the day. So as well as new characters, Darren, the existing characters seem to have expanded their storylines too, mm-hmm. like some of the other characters in the office at Savoir. Um, why was that so important for you going into season two? Well, we have a fantastic cast. We have such a, such wonderfully talented actors. And, and I wanted to, you know, I was looking forward to writing more for these characters and personally looking to sort of find out more about them. I was, you know, I'm curious myself. I mean, I, I like Sylvie, for instance, has so many, she's a very complex character. And there's, there's, um, I think season one, you think in some ways she can be pigeonholed. And then season two, you realize that there's all these layers that slowly get peeled back, but she doesn't, you know, and she's a character that doesn't really, she doesn't, isn't interested in revealing herself in a big way. But I think that unintentionally that that kind of happens and we get to see inside her. And I feel like I think the audience has developed such a greater rapport with a, with a character and cares about her so much more because they know how protective she is. And I think, you know, in terms of, um, you know, uh, you know, all of the characters, certainly Ashley, I mean, my God, Ashley is like triumphant this season. Oh she gosh. is like, it's it's like Mindy. She's like it's you know we love Mindy, but we get to 
get to follow her journey and, you know, and she follows her dream with Emily's encouragement. And I, I love the people that she gets involved with. And she sings this unbelievably amazing new song by Freddie Wexler that was written for the show. And it just, you know, it, it's just such a knockout. I mean, and I think it's just exciting to sort of follow her journey as well. And I think it's just about how, um, how Paris affects her character also. And I love hearing French spoken among our French actors. You know, there's so much yeah. more French spoken this season as, as their sort of storylines take hold and they're just basically in their French, in their lives. And so um, naturally they're going to be speaking French. And, and so they get to perform in French and you sort of forget that they're being asked to perform in English most of the time on this show. Yeah. And so it's like, it's wonderful to hear them speaking French and you don't, and, and really it's like, you don't even, I feel like the audience will not notice that they're that they're reading subtitles just goes away. And I think that's um, something that makes this season just, you know, just kicks it up to another level for me. Was that nice for you French members of the cast to see those scenes in French and be like, oh, okay, it's a little bit easier. <laughs> um, for me, it's not necessarily easier. I think when you play in not your mother tongue, it's easier not to judge yourself while you're playing. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily easier. But yeah, it was nice to speak some French and to be able to translate that and, and French culture more in season two than in season one. And I think it's a very important uh, topic and it's great that we can speak French together. And you know, and I, you know, and Camille, it's like I feel like in season one. The audience has these assumptions about her that get totally turned on their head in season two. She's so much more complicated than we thought, you know, and I just love the scenes that she has with her family and that they're speaking French to each other. And you just sort of like, you learn so much, you're learning so many important story points in French when you're watching the show this season. I'm so happy that her family are back. Those scenes are amazing. So yeah. I'm very excited for that. You need to decide what you want and not what's going to make everyone else happy. Hooray! Okay, let's talk about the trip to Saint-Tropez because that's obviously amazing in the first episode, first couple of episodes. Actually, when you saw that the script or read the script and saw that your character got to go, were you like, yes? Oh, totally psyched. Although I did say to Lily, I was like, oh my God, St. Tropez, we get to go. And she was like, it's Saint Tropez. I was like, girl, first, first thing and foremost, we are gonna say it right. <laughs> but I think it was super magical too, because I think we are all just in such disbelief really that we are not only getting a season two, but we really didn't get to celebrate season one as a cast because we were all across the world on our couches in different places. Places. So coming back together felt like that moment for us. And I mean, getting to go to the South, I'd never been to that area and really just being at that hotel and in, in those places was just like so magical and it felt like a girl's trip. And I think that there's a moment, I don't think it's a spoiler, like uh, in the mansion scene, the party scene where there is a flying saxophone. And I think we all read that and we're like, what is that? Okay, cool. And they, when we walked in and they showed it to us, we were like, oh my gosh, season two, they're not kidding. <laughs> going for it so yeah it was really fun well also okay so darren mentioned um mindy singing career how much fun has that been for you this season actually and do you have a favorite song or a place that you got to perform if that's not too much of a spoiler oh, yeah oh gosh um i think that i was so grateful to darren and the writers especially because what was important for us was that the music in this show i didn't want it to feel like ashley was begging everybody to let her sing you know <laughs> i really for me i come from the world of theater and music is really used to propel the story forward and to open up characters and develop relationships and i mean i loved two of my new castmates, Kevin and Jen, getting to perform with them. But I think it was just fun that I got to sing a lot of different, like Darren, I, I gave him like my wish list. I was like, Celine Dion and a K-pop <laughs> song and yeah. Broadway songs and whatever. Yeah. And then, um, but I think the most special one for us probably is, I remember he came up to me while we were filming maybe the third or fourth episode and Darren said, what do you think about an original song? And I was like, that would be awesome. I don't write music, but we <laughs> got Freddie Wexler. He was just Grammy nominated for a song he wrote for Justin Bieber and Ariana Grande. And he wrote with us like this song throughout the filming of season two. And so I've never, and I realized the other day, I've never had a song written for me to sing. And it was written for Mindy to sing, but um, I just think it's it's such a bop and it was just really special. And having Lucian and Luca and Lily there that day filming was really really special too so i'm really excited you absolutely killed it babe you killed it it was so, like so good 
We all yeah. get to be in scenes with her performing and it's always, they're always filming us hear it for the first time. <laughs> and so like all the reactions are always so genuine. And it's, it's just like, for me, I get to watch like one of my best friends up there I just, I feel so proud as Emily, as Lily. And like, I remember when you played me like three seconds of the song <laughs> once on her phone and I burst into tears. She was like, like, oh my God, yeah. this is so good. Oh, and we, sweet. it's just, yeah, it, we, we yeah. were begging for more Ashley. Even if I'm not in the scene, I literally turn up on the other side of the bridge where all, all, all the muggles are <laughs> watching the show. And I'm just literally watching. I'm like, that's my girl. That's my girl. <laughs> You've got the rest of your life to be as dull as you wish. But while you're here, fall in love, make mistakes. If you're gonna do Paris for one year, for God's sake, do it right. So assuming that Emily is pretty busy in the whole um, love or in the romance scene, how, um, Philippine, can you tease anything about what's going on with Sylvie's love life this season? Mm. Well, she, she's much more complex, as Darren says, that we thought she was because her armor is down suddenly and we see all her vulnerability and we see, uh, she, we see her much sweeter than we thought she was and able to have a very, very complicated love life, obviously, and also be overwhelmed by this American takeover on her agency, which she's gonna uh, try to get over that um, in a very <laughs> French way, she will. Yeah, we see her in a very, very deeper and complex way, and we see that she's a whole person. She's not just a bitchy boss. She's <laughs> more than that. Which well, is we great. also saw she kind of warned Emily in the season one finale that like things were going to get harder if Savoir if Emily stuck around. How is their relationship going this season? Are they still well, kind of clashing or friends? No, well, what happens is it's it's tough love. Uh, what I thought in season one already is that you know uh, Sylvie was a character who was going to make uh, Emily grow up. Uh, already in season one, I had the sense that was the meaning of that relationship. And in season two, it really comes to life when you can see that Sylvie is putting Emily uh, through obstacles and trials just to make her grow as a person and not only to become more French, as we're saying in the series, but also to become, uh, you know, to grow. Uh, so it's, it's kind of great because it has this tough love relationship. We obviously see at the end of the season, she really, really has a lot of respect and love that she's never going to show for <laughs> Emily, but she does have that. And uh, so it's, it's really interesting to play that, to play that tough love. Uh, it's kind of beautiful. And it, it's kind of, it's very maternal in a way, but like a cat can be maternal, you know, with, <laughs> you know, yeah. I love cats. I love how they, they, they raise their, their puppies. I mean, they're not puppies, kittens. Uh, you know, I love that. I think it's great. Uh, <laughs> they're fantastically loving and still kind of cruel because they kind of show them life, you know? Yeah. Uh, so she has that kind of attitude with Emily. But you know what happens is that I also find my nemesis in season two, because when Kate comes, yeah. Madeleine, comes to Paris, um, I have a harder time with somebody else, you know, really hard time with her. And that's super interesting. I just love that she's eating carrots in every scene. That really cracks me up. <laughs> she's great. She's absolutely great. She's so funny, generous, and and she's amazing. Amazing. Yeah, and you guys are wonderful together. So, so fun to watch. There were so many moments in Savoir, like the, at the table where you guys are like here and here, and I'm just going like this. Right. And it's like, it's right. great because it allows me to have an empathy for you having her come into it. And then me like trying to fend her off. You've taught me about a lot of self-worth in within the business, you know, that in a tough love type of way that allows me to then take a stand with her. I mean, it's so interesting when you add a new person into the equation, whether it's literally Lucian joining as Alfie or it's Kate coming back in, but in a new way, it changes the dynamic of all totally. the characters mm -hmm. and it allows for so many more nuanced moments within the scenes that all of a sudden I'm discovering new parts of Emily where I'm like, oh, this is fun. Okay, I'm going to lean into this. And, and we have that ability mm -hmm. to kind of play around and it just makes it so much brighter and it just, it's so great. I think the comedy in the office scenes this season too is so amped up, like with Philippine and then Luke and Samuel, Bruno and Samuel and yeah. you. I think like those comedic moments and like the rhythm that, it, like, you know how in, in 
sitcoms when a certain character says something, everyone's like, oh, you know, I know. it really felt like that from the table Bru- reading on. I agree. Bruno and Sandra, they're not with us now, but they are just genius this season. And oh, just the way they, the way they bounce off each other. They're just like, you know, Rosie Luno is amazing. I mean, they're just this amazing team you know they're hilarious but have you I noticed love- darren how you there's only triangles in this season <laughs> yes it's all the dynamics are triangular it's really about geometry it's incredible yeah. yes and and maybe a square in there too maybe a square that one there is yeah one. yeah Tiny things glittering oh look at them stare something sweet if you please i make magic everywhere three two one voila Post it later. I'm on vacation. Yes, bitch! Well, another fun relationship is Alfie and Gabrielle kind of having a bromance or bonding a little bit. Was that fun for you guys? And do you actually play soccer and are you good at it? (laughs) (laughs) That was very Uh, telling. That was very telling. It's all right, don't worry about it, it's cool, it's cool. We got this, we got this, we got, the boys have got this one. No, no, it, you know, we, we, we did a lot of interviews uh, before this and everybody's asking about uh, the, our, the conflict between us. And I think, you know, it's not, it's not all, all black and white. I think it was, uh, on, on a personal perspective, it was fun for me to have a, a fellow uh, roast beef on set and uh, to be able to, you know, share knowledge because everybody thinks that friends in England are, are pretty opposite, but we're, we're the same. I, and I love that we had, you know, an, a new character that was antagonist to Emily that that doesn't buy into the hype of Paris, that doesn't believe into this magic of her museum. So that gives a new perspective. It allows it allows also uh, Emily to, um, you know, connect to another side of her, a much uh, fun side. And uh, and you know, it's such an addition to 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 the all the critics uh, in France, the Parisians especially, I think they're gonna love Alfie because they needed that nuance. You know, it's it's not only beautiful and, and perfect. And uh, and so, you know, I was so glad to have him on set. We had so much fun. I love the dynamic of this, uh, you know, uh, new bromance and um, and I can't wait to see where this goes. Okay, so I have a question for you, Lucas. How do you, how do you say bromance in French? We don't have a word for that. You don't, yeah. <laughs> It's just no. an American word. You'd probably say broman, bromance. Broman. <laughs> Bro, um, <laughs> um, <laughs> I agree with the more cynical take that um, Alfie has on Paris. I really like that. I mean, this mm. is totally a Sylvia's, Sylvia-esque you would be. You would be. kind of you take. Would be. <laughs> Wait, do you guys play soccer though? Answer. <laughs> yeah, I didn't answer that. I'm getting us back on track. Thank you. <laughs> we, play, we play football a bit. I think, I think that's that's the most amazing thing about 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 the team that, that that's there is because I think we was probably talking about football a few times when our light uh, our mics were live and and then it was like hold on do you guys maybe we should yeah are we we got you guys even playing football later on down the line and was like okay cool let's do it let's do it let's do it and and that's my last day on set we was underneath yeah. there but kind of like football. On this amazing field and um honestly like yeah yeah so that was an emotional day for me so if, if my, my football skills weren't up to scratch <laughs> give me a break give me a break <laughs> but you know what listen we cut we we cut around it we made you look great we spoke about it i was like i was like that, that is that is yeah. movie magic right there right. thank you very much that's why i asked it looked good it looked impressive they both look, they both look very talented yeah. yeah very fast. No, out, no outtakes needed. No outtakes no, needed. No. <laughs> I think we're almost at time, but very quickly, I can't not ask about the fashion. Do each of you have a favorite look from this season or anything that you asked if you could take home? Lily, we can start with you. Oh, boy. I always ask to take everything home because I know they'll <laughs> say no, but I think maybe <laughs> one time they will. Um, I, I honestly think, yeah, fashion is such a character in this show in and of itself. Marilyn and Patricia both are such geniuses. Together, they create a language that is so necessary within this show. It's amazing to be able to go into the wardrobe and say, ooh, that's definitely Sylvie. That's cut me. That's, out. you know, like we all have our specific aesthetic within this show. And there were so many times I actually really wanted pieces from the other people, Mm -hmm. from the other characters. There were things that Philippine was wearing and Camille was wearing that I was like, I'm going to look up online and see if I can find this. (laughs) And I never could. Um, But yeah, also vintage. It was amazing vintage pieces that we found. So honestly, uh, if we get to go to a season three, 
I feel like the fashion there's only, I mean, how do you go up from there? You know, they just keep creating new, amazing moments. Yeah. I think that cause we're asked this a lot and I was really thinking about it and I was like, I love an oversized blazer. And I think that Samuel wears some of the coolest suits I've ever <laughs> seen in the show as Julian. And so I'd probably still one of his cool, like blazers. I actually think I did. We are obsessed with Camille's wardrobe. Yeah. Um, I think I did borrow Camille's red suit that she you wore did. to Bay when I went on a trip to Monaco. She so, did. Yeah, Cause I was so obsessed with it. So sorry. I brought it back. <laughs> I should have admitted, but. I brought it back. <laughs> Whatever you want. <laughs> Philippine and Kami, did you guys have a favorite outfit? Oh, I mean, a lot. I mean, I wanted to take them all oh, home too, but then I know that they're going to stay in my closet because I don't want to dress as Sylvie. It's it's <laughs> weird. I mean, I love the way she dresses, but then in real life, I'm much more comfy. So I kind of want to take them <laughs> home as like, you know, souvenirs or just to hold on to the character. I, just, <laughs> I don't want to let her go, but you know, I'm mm. not going to wear them. So. They stayed there. Maybe I don't know. Let's, but let's make season three even more <clears throat> crazy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Camille, you have a lot of great hats this season. I feel like every outfit is iconic for me. So just to pick one is hard. But I just want to say something because before picking one. What I love about this show is that it's a platform to discover new designer. Is and that's something I really care about. Uh, that's not establishment. Like I, I, I love to to have new designers on the show and to make no to make them to to get known uh, with Emily in Paris. But for me, if I have to pick just one outfit, it will be the Yves Saint Laurent dress, uh, heart shaped. <laughs> with a big, big uh, leather jacket oversized. So it's a mix between feminine and masculine. And that's what my style is about. So I just love this look. Yeah, and so Gabrielle, I mean, Gabrielle has some chef's clothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I like the new one. I like the black one. It's like we're getting into a new sphere. But I, honestly, my, my favorite outfit this season, uh, I don't want to give any spoilers, but it, it's an outfit that Ashley is wearing as she's performing. Uh, in the club it's like a, a mix between two outfits and i i think it's it's the iconic outfit i've ever witnessed and i think it's going to be a huge halloween classic next year and, <laughs> and you know it was it was hard because we were shooting you know you shoot on stage and uh, there's an entire scene when she's like goes out of stage and she goes to the bathroom and she and so she we we shoot in different locations and not at the same day and it was such a struggle for her to get into that costume <laughs> You know, she, she took one for the team and it, the, the result was just amazing. And it's definitely uh -huh. my favorite. Just, to add, to, that, just, just yeah. to add to that, my first day on set, the first day of me meeting Ashley, she was wearing an outfit and I didn't know it was Ashley in the outfit. So I was like, hi, how's it going? Nice to meet you. And then like an hour later, uh, I got reintroduced to Ashley and I was like, hi, how are you? And she's like, oh, I'm Ashley. I was like, oh, nice to meet you. She's like, well, we've we, we just I was met. like, we just met, dude. And he was yeah, like, was like oh, that wasn't right. you. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Well, yeah, the, the outfit is it, pretty incredible. Almost Power of good costuming, I guess. So, well, guys, this has been delightful. I'm so excited for everybody to see season two. And this has been Entertainment Weekly's Around the Table with Emily in Paris. Check out season two when it debuts on Netflix December 22nd. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Au revoir. Au revoir.